Okay, here's another problem where we're given a table of values and we're asked some limit questions, although this one's a little bit different than the previous ones. In this one, we're given two functions. They're named f and g, and we're told that they're both continuous functions, and we only know certain values. And even though we only know values for the functions at certain points, the functions are still continuous functions. So the way to interpret this table is we say when, when x is negative 1, then f of x is 7. So you see how that works. So f of 0 is 2, f of 1 is negative 1, and so on. And we can get values for g of x on the bottom row here. g of negative 1 is negative 4, and so on. And then we're told to find in this case, the first question, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x plus 4g of x. Well, this is a continuous function, so as x gets close to 0, then the value of the function will get close to f of 0. And we can see here f of 0 in the table is 2. So this is 2 right here. As x approaches 0, that becomes 2. And then g of x as x approaches 0, g approaches 3. So this is just equal to 2 plus, don't forget that 4 right there, 2 plus 4 times 3, which is 14. And that's our answer. Question B, find the limit as x approaches 3 of f of g of x. Okay, let's think about this. x is approaching 3, so what's happening to g of x? Well, at 3, g of x is 2. So this right here, g of x, that thing right there is 2. When x gets close to 3, that gets a value of 2. So what we have is f of 2. So what's f of 2? We can find that in the table also. Here's 2, an x value of 2. So f of 2 is 5. and 5 is our answer. And then there's one more down here, one more question. We're told find k such that the limit as x approaches k of f of x over g of x does not exist. Okay, well what would cause this limit to not exist? Well it would not exist if we had a zero denominator. So g of x has to be zero. So x has to be approaching what value in order for g of x to be 0. So let's look back at the table. We see here g, g of x has a value of 0 when x is 2. So as x approaches k, that has to be a value of 2 right there. We're told to find that value for k. k equals 2. 2 values a 0 for g.